The US is asking Israel to transition to low intensity warfare on Gaza. Now this does not seem to stop the Israeli bombardment or the rising death toll. What is the latest from this brutal war? It's been eight months since the war between the Sudanese army and the rapid support forces began. What impact has it had on the country? This is the Daily Debrief. These are your stories for the day. And before we go any further, if you're watching this on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button. The death toll from the brutal bombardment of Gaza has crossed 19,000 as Israeli atrocities continue unabated. Meanwhile, the US has conveyed to Israel that it should transition to low-intensity warfare. Although it's very unclear what that means, since US weapons are contributing to the intense bombardment. Meanwhile, there are reports that ceasefire talks are once again happening in Qatar. We go to Abdul for the latest. Abdul, thank you so much for joining us. Another week comes to an end with the brutal bombardment of Gaza continuing by Israel. The death toll has crossed 19,000 even as, uh, you know, noises are being made. There's some discussion, of course, about the possible ceasefire, but very early days yet. So first of all, could you take us through what the humanitarian condition is, what is happening on the ground? Well, in the last few days, uh, in fact, the attacks have become much more brutal. If you see what is happening to the Kamal Adwan hospital, there are reports coming that uh, Israeli troops basically bulldozed the people who were taking shelter inside the hospital without considering whether there are people inside those tents or not. And app apparently, uh, scores of people have been basically buried alive uh, as per the reports coming in the media. There are also reports about uh, other uh, incidents of bombing of the houses, bombing of UN shelters, basically, uh, in fact, uh, on uh, two consecutive days, on Thursdays, uh, sorry, on um, Thursday and Friday, there were reports about how uh, Israeli forces have basically attacked uh, the shelter homes, both through the airstrike and uh, through the ground offensive, killing innocent civilians. Uh, though some reports claim that some of them were killed uh, on uh, point blank, uh, but of course, there are, it is not confirmed. But these are the reports which are coming from the ground. Im amidst all that, as you rightly pointed out, the overall death toll has crossed 19,000 now. And, and every minute, the number is increasing. Uh, amidst that, uh, of course, uh, there, uh, the humanitarian situation when it comes to Gaza is becoming bad to worse. Every day we say the same thing, primarily because every day the situation is becoming bad. Uh, uh, there are reports coming of starvation among children. The uh, uh, UN agencies have confirmed it that there are uh, several cases of uh, children dying because of hunger. Uh, uh, some of the uh, children are forced to share whatever food they are getting uh, uh, um, with their peer, peer. And then there are reports also about how uh, some of the uh, uh, children, in fact, have basically have developed some com some kind of uh, positions, complications, which is difficult to cure in future, even if there is a uh, uh, there is some uh, restoration of quote-unquote normalcy. So overall situation in the Gaza Strip, uh, both in terms of the Israeli attacks and in terms of humanitarian situation is basically worse, uh, has become worse in the last few days. Uh, on Friday, uh, another uh, Palestinian journalist, uh, Al Jazeera journalist was killed. Uh, this basically, the overall number of journalists killed has crossed, is basically touching 100 now. Uh, then there are reports coming from different sections of the uh, uh, media that Israeli forces are taking uh, random P Palestinian people under captivity and kind of staging some kind of fake surrender, uh, uh, and of course, treating them in a very inhuman, brutal uh, ways. So all those videos have come, uh, come out in public. Uh, and so this is overall the situation when it comes to the, uh, comes to the situation in Gaza. You rightly pointed out that there, is, there are talks about ceasefire uh, resuming, but uh, these, this is yet too early to say anything about it. Yeah. And Abdul, amidst all this, we also know that the US <coughs> is saying that it has asked Israel to switch to what is called low-intensity uh, warfare. It seems kind of uh, difficult to understand what this means. What is the context of this uh, argument even? Well, uh, 
given the fact that there is a growing uh, uh, criticism of the us role in the war uh, the fact that uh, the the most of the palestinians who have been killed in the name of uh, fighting hamas are basically civilians particularly children uh, and uh, uh, the elderly uh, all this basically has created a massive uh, public uh, uh, basically uh, resentment against uh, the us role both in the uh, west asia and in uh, in the united states as well apart from the other parts of the globe this basically uh, kind of uh, creates a situation where biden administration is fighting to some kind of image saving so this is what uh, uh, what basically us says about low intensity war is basically another way of saying of avoid uh, civilian casualties uh, which it has been saying for last many weeks uh, now uh, of course without any uh, uh, meaning to it of course because the uh, the amount of weapons supplied to the israelis which are used uh, in bombing gaza Uh, has increased in fact it has not gone down and when the jack sullivan was there in uh, uh, israel uh, and also uh, in the region basically he did not say anything uh, about uh, the possibility of ceasefire in fact he said that whatever israel is doing the us will continue to support it in whatever way possible in fact israelis have completely denied us attempts to kind of think of a post war scenario where uh, uh, how the gaza will be administered and apart from uh, as per the reports which is coming in the media uh, israel is completely denying any uh, possibility of ceasefire now or any possibility of sharing uh, um, sorry any possibility of letting the palestinians govern gaza uh, uh, as well uh, so uh, though us is claiming on the, on one side that it wants uh the gaza to kind of uh, go back to the palestinian authority to be governed after the war so all the the primary uh, point is that despite the fact that what us is saying it is not able to convert its uh, 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 convert its rhetoric uh, in act uh, because israel is not listening to what us is saying even if it is saying something in the private at least in public it has not said anything which can give any hope about uh, uh, saving uh, palestinian lives or about uh, kind of creating a situation for the ceasefire in gaza Right, Abdul. And finally, could you also talk, tell us a bit about what the regional dynamics right now are? We know that, of course, uh, while the war, uh, there have been many uh, attacks by some of the regional resistance forces as well. Well, in the last few days, again, uh, the uh, the situation on the northern uh, Israeli border with Lebanon has become uh, tense, very tense, in fact. Uh, uh, as per the reports, even on uh, Saturday. uh morning there were uh, uh, exchange of fire between hezbollah and the israeli forces in which some of the israeli soldiers have been uh, apparently injured uh, though the reports are not confirmed of course when it comes to houthis uh, they continue to uh, block the bab al mandab uh, 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 in the red sea and continue to uh, target the ships which are heading to israel as per their declaration uh, earlier um apart from that the uh, I, i think we have already talked about it how the us uh, bases all across uh, the region have come under attack and those those attacks have not gone down apart from these uh, 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 physical targeting of uh, israel and uh, us which basically is seen as a su- supportive to the war in is uh, in gaza there are also uh, uh, basically increasing Uh, uh you can say frustration among the arab uh, governments in the region uh, who have basically expressed much uh, stronger resentment resentments against uh, the us failure to basically create any situation uh, pressurize israel to put an end to its war it boot, brutal war in gaza right abdul thank you so much for that roundup we'll come back to you for our next story
It's been eight months since war broke out between the Sudanese armed forces and the paramilitary rapid support forces. Millions are displaced and a massive humanitarian crisis is underway. Now, it's important to remember that the Sudanese left and the popular neighborhood resistance committees had warned that the generals who had ruled Sudan for years were not to be trusted. However, the international community made them a key part of the so-called transition to democracy until internal conflicts led to the war. Over the months, you have seen reports of human rights violations from both sides, including ethnic cleansing in Darfur. We go back to Abdul for details. Abdul, eight months since the war began in Sudan, quite a, an extremely brutal war, one that has been massively underreported actually, uh, considering the amount of humanitarian, uh, you know, the number of deaths, the humanitarian crisis that is taking place uh, right now in the country, the war continuing between the armed forces and the rapid support forces, former allies. Uh, citizens' committees had warned that these generals could not be trusted and the same thing happened. So first of all, could you maybe take us through uh, where, uh, you know, what is happening as regards to the battle itself? What is the kind of military position, especially now that there are talks about some kind of negotiations taking place? Exactly. In fact, uh, the regional uh, East uh, African uh, Forum, which is basically called I. IGAD uh, basically has uh, con basically claimed that uh, there is an attempt uh, uh, to kind of uh, create some kind of ceasefire in uh, Sudan. Uh, uh, though there are there have there have been no in official confirmation about it. Neither the Sudanese army nor the uh, RSF has confirmed it uh, so far, but uh, of course they have acknowledged that there are, there is a talk going on, and they have I think uh, given a two weeks time for kind of building uh, confidence building measures to be taken by both the sides so that there can be a ceasefire. But uh, despite the talks of ceasefire, uh, the war continues. Uh, in fact, a uh, few days back there there had been. Uh, blasts inside uh, capital Khartoum and of course the war in the Darfur and other uh, uh, remote areas continue where the RSF is basically considered to be stronger vis-a-vis -vis the, the Sudanese army. So uh, it seems that overall situation when it comes to war has uh, not uh, uh, has gone down, despite the fact that it has been eight months. And there were claims in the beginning that RSF will not have enough uh, uh, resources to continue the war for long. It seems they have enough resources and, it, and they continue to basically uh, uh, continue to kind of uh, uh, spoil any chances of peace uh, in Sudan. And that has basically lead, led to a very uh, bad humanitarian situation uh, in the in the country. Uh, the country has already become the largest uh, in the world in terms of displaced uh, people. More than six million. Sudanese have dis been displaced. Uh, some of them have also gone out of the country, become refugees, uh, of, and, but the most of them remain inside. And those who remain inside are living in, in a very bad uh, condition because, of course, the humanitarian agencies are not able to take care of uh, their basic needs. Uh, uh, and that has basically created a situation of a massive outbreak of different kinds of uh, uh, epidemics uh, uh, among the people in Sudan, and uh, so all these things are ha these things are happening at a time when, of course, the attention is basically divided between what is happening in Gaza and what is happening in other parts of the world. But uh, despite the fact that the attention is divided, the fact remains that Sudanese war is one of the most brutal wars uh, in the recent uh, decade uh, uh, in Africa. Abdul, in this context, also wanted to ask you specifically about the situation in Darfur. You mentioned that uh, you know there is uh, the RSF is much stronger there. We did have we did have reports talking about ethnic cleansing there as well. So, what exactly is happening over there? Well, uh, the reports, of course, uh, most of the reports are not uh, very uh, clear about it. But there, the th this has been a kind of history of the region. If you see RSF. Uh, uh, in fact, before the RSF, there were Sudan, uh, when the Umar al Bashir was there in power, there were reports of how uh, the militias were used to kind of ethnically cleanse some of the, the people in the region who were considered to be separatists and so on and so forth. But uh, uh, this similar kind of, uh, you can say, uh, situation, those same militias which were used by Omar al-Bashir, basically now is basic, uh, by and large is part of the RSF, which basically uh, uh, creates a, uh, 
things that uh, uh, kind of uh, fighting against the state means fighting against the common uh, people living in the region. And that basically leads to attack uh, on villages, uh, uh, attack on the, uh, uh, the towns, att attack on the uh, different uh, uh, localities which are considered to be the uh, now, ironically, as uh, supporters of the uh, uh, mil uh, Sudanese military. So, uh, so the fact that because the, the situation in Darfur is so complex, uh, where it is uh, no one uh, in, in, is in a position to say which group loyalties lies to which group, basically there, uh, because of the, uh, uh, the kind of chaos which is created uh, in Sudan, uh, has basically created a fertile ground for different kinds of uh, cross uh, uh, fighting uh, against forces considered to lo be loyal to the opposite, opposite force. And that is exactly what is happening. So it is very difficult to say exactly who is killing, killing whom. But the primary uh, 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 fact remains that there are reports that RSF is basically carrying out ethnic cleansing against the people in the region, which are considered now blaming, claiming that these people are uh, basically supporters of uh, Burhan and supporters of the Sudanese uh, uh, army. Right, Abdul, thank you so much for that update. We'll come back to you next week with more questions. And that's all we have in this episode of Daily Debrief. We'll be back soon with another episode. In the meanwhile, do visit our website, peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on all the social media platforms. Thank you.